Hi, I'm Mr McMillan, and here are my 10 steps to creating a perfect revision space. Step 1. Find somewhere quiet and comfortable. This is fairly obvious, but you'll want to avoid places where other people will be doing things. So basically, the big two to avoid are the kitchen, which is normally the busiest place in the house, or the living room, where the TV will be a major distraction. It also needs to be somewhere with good lighting, preferably natural light, and somewhere warm, but not too warm. Step 2. Find somewhere that's not completely isolated. You may be thinking this slightly contradicts step 1, but bear with me. You want to be somewhere quiet, but also not so quiet that no one can see what you're doing. For example, if you revise in your bedroom, then it's too easy to get away with doing little or no work, or to just get distracted by other things. Therefore, somewhere like the dining room is ideal. You can be left alone, but it's also possible for people to check that you're revising too and keep you accountable. Step 3. Find somewhere tidy. There's an old saying with various variations that says, tidy desk, tidy mind. If you're a naturally tidy person, great. If not, you'll want to work on keeping your revision space tidy. You don't want unnecessary stress the night before an exam because you can't find a particular set of notes. Keep everything neat and avoid having stuff on your desk that you don't need. Also, clear away any cups, plates and food wrappers before they begin to get in the way. Step 4. Find somewhere spacious. Now this may depend on your house, but you want to avoid a small cramped space where you're likely to constantly be knocking things off the desk or having to spread notes out on the floor. Again, a dining table works really well as you have enough space to work and if you're lucky you can store all your revision stuff there for the duration of the exams. Step 5. Find somewhere to stick things up. Now this may not always be so easy in the dining room, but if possible you want to have somewhere where you can stick things up on the wall. Whether it's your revision timetable, your exam list, mind maps, notes or even a photo of your summer holiday destination. Step 6. Find somewhere near a plug. Now there will be some of you who have been told that you shouldn't use any electronic devices when you revise. While I admit that some electronic devices can be a temptation for procrastination, if used well something like a laptop is a great revision aid. This links to step 2. If you are somewhere where others can see what you're doing, you won't be tempted to waste hours on social media when you should be revising. Step 7. Find somewhere else to store your mobile. So while a laptop can help revision, a mobile phone probably won't be so useful, so put it somewhere else. Let your mobile be a treat to reward yourself at the end of each revision session, rather than a constant distraction throughout. If you really need to, then give your phone to a responsible person to look after while you're revising. Step 8. Find somewhere with enough stationery. Depending on how you like to revise, make sure you have enough pens, paper, highlighters, maths equipment, rulers, rubbers, colouring pens, and really anything that will help ensure your revision runs smoothly. Step 9. Find somewhere where you can put all your revision materials in one place. Get all your exercise books, textbooks, handouts, practice papers, mark schemes and revision guides into one place. If you have enough space, put them into separate piles for each subject and keep them close at hand. Step 10. To play music or not to play music. This is a controversial question. It tends to be teenagers who claim that they absolutely must have music to revise to, while most teachers and parents seem to think that revision should be done in silence. Personally, I'm somewhere in between. I think listening to music can help the revision process, but it can also be a distraction. If the reason you want to listen to music is so you can procrastinate for 10 minutes deliberating about which song to play next, or you can't resist the temptation to get up and dance along, then make the sensible decision and switch the music off. Perhaps a good compromise is to listen to instrumental music. This removes the temptation to sing or dance along. Try typing study music into YouTube and you'll find some excellent instrumental playlists. Thanks for watching, I've been Mr McMillan. Best of luck finding your perfect revision space. Make sure to check out some of my other revision tips here and here.